the showdown between the HP ZBook Fury and the HP ZBook Studio. These are the G10 models, and I'm really excited to dive into each of these because I'm sure some of you are trying to figure out which one is right for you. Now, right off the bat, the Fury has the RTX A5000 and the Studio has the RTX 4080. So just kind of give you a little perspective on the configurations I have before me. And of course, you've seen the configurations up on the screen. Now, looking at these two models, let's go ahead and check out the assembly and build quality. Going ahead and looking at the weight and thickness first, as you can see, the Fury is much thicker. And that's mainly due that you can quickly access and upgrade this laptop by just sliding off the bottom cover. Super awesome. Four SSDs and four RAM sticks available to upgrade. Upgrade path on the Fury is just absolutely amazing. However, I scratch my head a little bit because it's not like you're upgrading your laptop on a daily basis. So the fact that it's this easy is neat, but to me, it's not exactly like the most important thing ever. However, if you're doing really big projects and you wanna be able to just like hand somebody an SSD and say, here's the whole project, then I think that's kind of cool. But having this amount of upgrade ability is, is not like life or death. Now you can upgrade the studio as well. You're gonna have access to two RAM sticks and one SSD. So keep in mind, there's a much bigger upgrade path on the Fury compared to the studio. Uh, and it's also easier to access on the Fury. Now, as I said, let's look at the build quality. The assembly is almost identical between these two laptops. You just have a thicker body on the Fury, but it looks almost exactly the same. Uh, obviously a little bit of a, a more width on the Fury compared to the studio, but the actual assembly is visually very, very similar. Now taking a look at the ports on the ZBook Studio versus the ZBook Fury, you can see we have an SD card reader, HDMI, mini display port, USB type C's and our power adapter. Power adapter, USB type C's and headphone jack on the studio. Now flip these two laptops over and you can see all we have on the other side is gonna be a micro SD card reader on the studio, USB type C, USB A and Kensington lock, uh, where we have a network port, two USB type A's, headphone jack and then Kensington lock as well. So definitely more ports on the Fury. If you're looking for a bigger port selection, then I would choose the Fury over the studio. Now going ahead and moving along to the battery life, the ZBook Studio and the ZBook Fury have very similar battery life performance. Now both of these laptops were set at 20% screen brightness and Windows Battery Saver mode turned on. We did not access any of the discrete GPU or iGPU options because that's something that is not readily available on the ZBook series. It's more automated in its optimizing of the components. So those are the settings that we use. And of course I did set both laptops to 60 Hertz refresh rate to get these battery life results. So the computer itself actually does a really good job of optimizing the GPU and the CPU in order to get good battery life. Um, it was upwards of eight hours for both of these laptops, which I think is great for how much performance these laptops pack. Now going ahead and taking a look at the webcam, they both have webcams, except there's a manual cutoff switch uh, for the webcam on the Fury. There's not um, for the studio. Here's a quick sample of the webcams so you can see what they look like in use. This is the webcam on the HP ZBook Fury G10 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This the webcam on the ZBook Studio G10 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, of course, now that we have both laptops open, let's do a quick audio sample of the speakers so you can hear what those sound like. Now the keyboards and trackpads are quite a bit different. We have a simplified keyboard with Bang & Ulfusen speakers on the laptop, as you just heard. Um, so definitely a better audio experience coming out of the studio compared to the Fury. However, you can see that we have a little bit more of options going on here for the click buttons on the Fury. So you have the center button, which you can you know navigate around objects inside of 3D modeling softwares. We don't have that for the studio. So definitely more geared towards 3D modeling softwares the Fury is. Um, and we also have a numpad for typing in you know, numbers really quickly. And a lot of people like the numpad feature. I've never actually taken the time to learn how to use a numpad proficiently. So it doesn't really matter for me personally, but I know they're very valuable for people who can use them very quickly. Now the keyboards though, outside of that are exactly the same. You can see we have the same arrow key selection, same full size shift keys, backspace and enter, as well as a full size caps lock on these keyboards. So basically what you're doing is you're adding a numpad and the three click buttons for the Fury. Both have nice size trackpads. This is something I was really happy about. And the trackpads themselves are slightly different, though they feel the same. So they both have glass trackpads. However, there's not a manual click button on this trackpad. So you can have the tap feature, 
So if I go ahead and open this folder, I can double tap to open the folder, but it does not click manually. Where over here, this is a manual click trackpad. And of course it does have the double double tap as well. So a little bit of a different trackpad, though they are visually the same and they have the same material um, minus the click buttons. Okay, let's do a quick audio sample of me using the keyboards and trackpads so you can hear what they sound like in use. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Fury and the Studio, you can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's to keep this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. All right, without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks so we can see these laptops head to head to see which one is the better performer for you personally. Now, going ahead and jumping into the simulated benchmarks, we're gonna look at Geekbench single core and multi-core, Cinebench R23 and Cinebench 2024. Um, that's where you can see which one is a better contender in regards to simulated benchmarks. I'm not a huge fan of simulated benchmarks, but I always like to show them so people aren't left without them when making their purchasing decision. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into the real world benchmarks now that we finish taking a look at the simulated benchmarks. Looking at the Photoshop benchmark, you can see that the Fury falls quite a bit behind the Studio. The Studio is definitely the big performer here in this head-to-head -head benchmark and beats it out by almost 200 points. Now, moving on into After Effects, you can see that the ZBook Fury starts to step up its game a bit and the ZBook Studio actually drops down a bit. So if you're an After Effects user, the Fury is going to be a better bet for you. Looking at Blender Classroom, you can see the ZBook Fury takes a 400 point lead on the studio. So that RTX A5000 is definitely gonna be an advantage to you inside of Blender. Now, moving on into Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya and PTC Creo, you can see that the Fury is definitely showing some advantage over the studio. Not a ton on these first three, but it definitely is showing off to be the better performer. Now, as we move on into SolidWorks, you can see that the Fury scores a 232, where the Studio scores a 118. Definitely a big advantage in SolidWorks because you have an RTX A5000 workstation GPU, which is optimized for SOLIDWORKS. You want to have a workstation GPU for SOLIDWORKS and other programs like Revit because SOLIDWORKS and Revit work specifically with NVIDIA to optimize the GPUs for their programs. The RTX 4080 is still a great GPU, but because it's not optimized for SOLIDWORKS, it doesn't show off as much as the A5000. Looking at video editing, you can see that 6K red footage is dropping some frames from both the studio and the Fury. Not a lot though. You probably won't even notice those drop frames. So both laptops would be great for 1080p, 4K, and 6K video editing. In regards to the export times, the 4K export where we take a nine minute 4K clip, put it into Premiere Pro and export out at full quality 4K settings. Both are neck and neck, very close. However, when we get into 6K, you can see about a two minute difference between these two export times. Same setup, we take a 6K clip, put it in Premiere Pro, export out at full quality 6K settings. So I would say the Fury is gonna have a little bit of an advantage if you're gonna be using 6K footage. The next thing I wanna look at is DaVinci Resolve. You can see that we have the Studio and the Fury neck and neck once again, not gonna make a difference in DaVinci Resolve, both will have good performance. Now, punch for punch, if it were me, because I am not a SolidWorks user, I would lean towards the Studio as it's gonna be just a simpler, low key, trimmed down, minimalist, thin light on the go friendly laptop. However, if you are a big 3D modeling user, you need to be using SolidWorks, you need to have a lot of access to four SSDs, four RAM sticks, tons of RAM upgradability performance. And that means you can get up to like 128 gigs of RAM inside of this laptop. So it's, I mean, it's basically a desktop replacement. It has tons of performance. And the Fury is an incredible option and the performance is matched with the opportunity for upgrade features, connectivity. It's a killer laptop. Links in the description below if you wanna check out the live pricing or if you're ready to make a purchase. Otherwise, click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you here in the next one.